Good morning, Isopod fans. This is Wally from Supreme Gecko. That's all the German I know. Good morning. Good morning, all. Good afternoon. Good evening, all. Welcome to another edition of the Isopod Setup Review. The Isopod Vlog. And this one's coming from Mark Collar from Germany. So let's take a look. I really want to thank everybody that submitted their videos for the Isopod Setup Review. This is a fun exercise. I get a lot of comments from people that say that this is really helping them keep their isopods better. So we're going to keep doing these. I'm a bit behind right now, but if you have an isopod setup that you want me to review, go ahead and send it. Keep it around a minute or so. Tell me what isopods are in it. Tell me a little bit about the setup, the substrate, the leaves, the dried wood, what you're feeding them, the calcium that you use, how you moisten the enclosure, how you keep a moist area, how you ventilate the enclosure and keep it all within a minute, or try to, somewhere around there. Again, this is from Mark from Germany. If you're from Germany or another country other than the US, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Let's get into the video. Hello, Wally, and thank you for letting me show my Porcelio La Avis Dairy Cow enclosure. It's a hundred centimeter, I guess it's about 32 gallons tank I once used for my fish. And now is the home of about 30 dairy cow isopods that can live here for the next 200 years, I guess. <laughs> that is a huge enclosure. In fact, Mark. I'm proud to announce that you're the winner of our biggest enclosure ever submitted on the Isopod Setup Review. Congratulations! This one's 32 gallons, 32 gallons, and it's a glass enclosure. Again, I'm really impressed by European keepers. They seem to do things differently in Europe than in the U.S. The U.S., we like to put uh, lots of little things in little boxes. European keepers in general, aquarium keepers, uh, tropical fish keepers, keep their animals in big setups so they can enjoy them. And I, I'm one of the people that keep them in, keep animals in small enclosures. So this is going to be a pleasure to watch. Let's go ahead and get back into the video. We got a wet side, a mussy part and a dry side. The wet side, the substrate is much deeper than on the dry side and underneath this wet side there is a big root. So it's like arm thick, like you put a whole arm underneath the substrate. On top there is a root and here is some basilicum. Let's stop it right there. So the substrate is deeper on the moist side than the dry side. That's very interesting. That's a great idea. The animals, the Porcelio Lavis dairy cows, will spend time on the dry side, but they'll go over to the moist side. That deeper moist side allows for less moisture to evaporate. Uh, it still keeps the environment humid, but it just stays moist longer. Great idea, Mark. Wonderful idea. Lots of branches in this enclosure. Just incredible. So. Dairy cows will climb on the branches occasionally, but they probably won't utilize them that much. But it's really cool to see all the branches, and if I'm not mistaken, I see some lichen on some of these branches as well. Looking at the surface, I see that there's a couple of points that I want to make, but I'll make them in just a moment. Let's keep watching. And, of course, a lot of moss, a lot of decaying wood and leaves, and all the good stuff is mixed under the substrate that it's made of earth and pine flakes and all other stuff I found here. We're going to stop right there. So you're mixing in the leaves and wood and everything right into the substrate. And you need to do that and, and keepers that do it right will mix in leaves and, and wood, whatever they can, into the substrate to make that substrate last longer. What I'm missing are leaves on top of the surface. You see there are way Two less, I need a bunch more there, but 
yeah, I hope you like it and it's kind of a new thing because most of us only keep isopods on those little boxes and my son and I thought, why not creating a little piece of forest here in our home right on top of our fish tanks. So, greetings from Germany and I hope you enjoy the video and give me some advice. Cool, Mark. Greetings from the U.S. as well. Thanks for submitting this video. I really appreciate that. Again, uh, and you identified this issue, you need more uh, leaves on top. These dairy cows will burrow into the substrate and, uh, on occasion and, and find those leaves, but having a pile of leaves on the dry side, they'll be able to, to move over to the dry side and eat those leaves. Food's important, and you don't mention what you're feeding the, the isopods just yet. Foods are very, very important. Uh, dry leaves and decaying wood is most important. I see wood in, in this enclosure. I'm not sure if it's the flakeable wood, if it's decaying wood. Make sure that it is so that the isopods have an easier way of eating that wood. I don't believe I remember hearing about a calcium source. So you absolutely want to have some kind of a calcium source in there. Some type of uh, crushed eggshells or calcium carbonate or something like that in here as well. A couple of points that you really want to take into consideration with this setup is that you need on the moist side, at least I feel, some kind of a sphagnum moss to hold that moisture in on the, the uh, substrate. Otherwise, it's going to evaporate, evaporate pretty quickly. So consider that and also consider some kind of a cork bark or tree bark or something like that that can expand uh, quite a bit of the length of this enclosure so that it encompasses the moist area and it also encompasses the dry area so the dairy cows can get under there and breed and find comfort under there, hide, and they'll just be as happy as anything. When I look at my dairy cow enclosures, I find 99% of them always under the wood. They just congregate under there, they have their babies, the mankai, and they're just as pleased as anything having a piece of wood that keeps them fairly in contact with that substrate, or at least gaining the humidity of that substrate, especially on the moist area, and really enjoying that piece of wood extending the, the length or most of the length of the enclosure. You didn't mention if you have a top on this enclosure or not. I'm guessing that you don't. If you don't, that's huge ventilation. That's great ventilation, but you might be losing a lot of humidity and moisture from the moist area from not having some kind of a top. So you want to play around with that. If you find too much or too quickly that that moisture is drying out, you might want to put a half of a lid on there, maybe a piece of plastic or something, just to keep some of that humidity in. Otherwise, I would give this setup a yellow. I'd like to see, again, more, sub, more uh, sphagnum moss on the moist area. I'd like to see some kind of a piece of wood extending, maybe a concave piece of wood extending from the moist area to the dry area. I'm not sure if you're offering the calcium or not, Make sure that you are, and make sure that you're feeding a variety of foods. That's way down on the list, but it's something that you need to do as well. This is a great enclosure. Thanks for sharing this, Mark. Everyone, I hope you appreciated this, this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification all so you don't miss another one of these videos. Thanks, everyone, for watching.